Find the Taylor series for the function natural log of x centered at c equals 1. First natural question is, why are we asking for a Taylor series and not specifically a Maclaurin series? So remember, a Maclaurin series is a special case of a Taylor series where we center our focus at the point c equals 0. That would never work for ln of x. Why can't we center ln of x at x equals 0 or c equals 0? Exactly, because 0 is not in the domain of ln of x. 1 is in the domain, and not only that, but ln of 1 is a nice easy value to compute. So let's look for the general Taylor series for ln of x centered at c equals 1. Recall that the formula for the Taylor series is very similar to the Maclaurin series, but a little messier. We evaluate our function at our point c, which is not necessarily the point 0, plus f prime of c. And here's where the difference occurs. We have to multiply by x minus c, plus the second derivative at c, times x minus c squared, over 2 factorial, plus the third derivative at c, x minus c cubed, over 3 factorial, plus the general term is the nth derivative at c, x minus c to the n, over n factorial. So in order to find the Taylor series for ln of x, we have to find the derivatives of ln of x. Let's begin with the function itself. f of x is ln of x. And instead of evaluating it at 0 like we would in a Maclaurin series, here we need f of 1. ln of 1 is 0. Now I suggest that you pause the video for a minute and you try and write down f prime of x, f double prime of x, f triple prime of x. Write down the first few derivatives and then come back. Okay, let's see what I get. f prime of x is 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. The derivative of negative 1 over x squared is 2 over x cubed. The derivative of 2 over x cubed is, I still have the 2, and now I also have a negative 3 over x to the 4th. And the next derivative I keep my constants because of that constant multiple rule. So I have my 2 and my 3 and I now introduce a negative 4, so the negatives cancel, 2, 3, 4, over x to the 5th. And I'm purposefully keeping those numerators in factored form, and I'm not multiplying them out. And that's because in my formula up top here in green, I have all those factorials in the denominator, so I'd like to keep my numbers multiplied out like this. f prime of 1 is 1 f double prime of 1 is negative 1. f triple prime of 1 is 2. The fourth derivative at 1 is negative 2 times 3. The fifth derivative at 1 is a positive 2 times 3 times 4. Do you see a pattern here? The signs are alternating, and what we really have are factorials. This here is a 0 factorial. This is a 1 factorial, but with a negative in front. This is 2 factorial. This is a 3 factorial, but with a negative in front. And here we have a 4 factorial. Now let's put it all together according to that green formula up on top of the page. ln of x must be equal to 
The first term is f of c. Well, that's a 0. The next term is 1 times x minus c. x minus 1 minus x minus 2. I'm sorry. x minus 1 squared, there's the 2, over 2 factorial, which is 2. Then I have plus a 2 factorial times x minus 1 cubed over 3 factorial minus 3 factorial x minus 1 to the 4th over 4 factorial plus. And look what's happening with these factorials. 2 factorial over 3 factorial, 3 factorial over 4 factorial. And remember how nicely factorials cancel out. 2 factorial over 3 factorial leaves a 3 on the bottom. 3 factorial over 4 factorial leaves just a 4 on the bottom. So here's what we get. ln of x is equal to x minus 1. That should say x minus 1 minus x minus 1 squared over 2 plus x minus 1 cubed over 3 minus x minus 1 to the 4th over 4, etc. And let's try and write that down using sigma notation. Looks like we have x minus 1 to the n over n, but we have alternating signs, so we have to have a factor of negative 1 to the something. And we'd like to start our n's at 1, but we have to start with a positive number, so let's put the power on the negative 1. Let's make that an n plus 1. Negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x minus 1 to the n over n. And that's our series. We have one more step, and that is we have to figure out what is the interval of convergence. So in order to figure out the interval of convergence, we have to use one of our convergence tests. And what's the test you always use? When in doubt, use the ratio test. So here we go, ratio test. We need to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of, so since we're doing absolute value, we can ignore the part that says negative 1 to the n plus 1. We have to do the n plus first term. That would be x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 over the nth term, but dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so we multiply by an n on the top and an x minus 1, x minus 1 on the bottom. That's equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. Let's simplify that. First of all, we have the n over n plus 1 goes together. And then what's left is just an x minus 1 on the top. This limit here goes to 1. And the x minus 1 has nothing at all to do with n, so this limit is equal to absolute value of x minus 1. And what does the ratio test say? Let's remember, the ratio test said if that limit of that ratio is less than 1, then the series converges. So the limit of that ratio is the absolute value of x minus 1. This must be less than 1, or x minus 1 has to be between negative 1 and 1. If x minus 1 is between negative 1 and 1, let's add 1 to all three parts of that inequality. That means that x is between 0 and 2. So that's our interval almost. From here we could see that the radius of convergence radius of convergence is 1. But we still need to check the endpoints. So what happens 
when x, let's check 2 first. When x is equal to 2, what does this series become? The series looks like this. 2 minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 squared over 2 plus 2 minus 1 cubed over 3 minus 2 minus 1 to the 4th over 4, which is 2 minus 1 is just 1. So this is 1 minus a half plus a third minus a fourth plus etc. This is the alternating harmonic. which we know converges. It's not enough to just check one endpoint. We have to check the other endpoint too. So let's check x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, the series becomes 0 minus 1 minus 0 minus 1 squared over 2 plus 0 minus 1 cubed over 3 minus 0 minus 1 to the 4th over 4, etc., which becomes negative 1 minus a half minus a third minus a fourth minus a fifth. And even though we have negative signs, notice that this is not an alternating harmonic. This is actually equal to negative the harmonic series. And we know that the harmonic series diverges. Do you remember how we know that? You could check that the harmonic series diverges either using the integral test or by noticing that it's a p-series with p equal to 1. Either way, that's the harmonic series and that diverges. So the radius I'm sorry, the interval of convergence now is interval of convergence for the Taylor series that we found for ln of x is the half open, half closed interval. We do not include the zero, but we do include the two. The end.